from lions hunting antelope to cats and mice, we have all seen predator-prey interactions in the world around us. This type of interaction is a plus-minus interaction, where the predator is going to benefit because they get food, while the prey items are harmed because they are killed off and eaten. Predator-prey interactions produce adaptations in both the predators and their prey. Often we say that this is a co-evolutionary arms race, where the predators and prey are acting as selective pressures driving the evolution of each other. Predators have a huge impact on prey populations. Predation can limit population growth. Prey populations also have an effect on predator populations. When prey populations drop, predators run out of food and are unable to survive. A good example of this interaction is seen in the lynx and snowshoe hares. We have looked at this graph before where the populations cycle in response to each other and there's a boom-bust cycle due to these predator-prey interactions. Prey adaptations help reduce the risk of predation. We are going to look at two broad categories of defense against predators, physical and behavioral defenses. Physical defenses are things like mechanical, chemical, warning coloration, and camouflage mechanisms that help prevent prey from being eaten. Mechanical defenses include physical structures such as quills on a porcupine. These quills keep predators from capturing and eating the prey. Chemical defenses are toxins that these animals use to poison the predators. A classic example of this is seen in poison dart frogs. These animals use a toxin in their skin to poison anything that tries to eat them. The poison dart frogs and these butterflies use warning colorations, also known as aposomatic coloration, to warn off predators and let them know that they are toxic. The poison dart frogs are often bright yellow, blue, or red. This tells predators that they are dangerous to eat. The monarch butterfly uses an orange and black banding pattern to tell predators that they don't taste good. Monarchs do not taste good because their larvae, the caterpillars, eat milkweed, which has a chemical in it that makes them very distasteful. So both the caterpillar larvae and these butterflies maintain that nasty flavor and keeps predators from wanting to eat them. Sometimes we see mimics of these coloration patterns. In these examples, we see that there are often harmless individuals that mimic or pretend to be something they are not. For example, the viceroy butterfly has the same color pattern as the monarch butterfly. The monarch has that nasty flavor to it due to the milkweed. Viceroy butterflies do not have that flavor. However, they benefit from the color pattern because predators can't tell the difference. We see very similar patterns of mimicry with the yellow and black banding pattern. We all know that bees and wasps have a stinger and can hurt our, us and others who are trying to bother them or eat them. Many other individuals like to mimic this pattern. Flies, moths, and even beetles will have a yellow and black banding pattern that makes them look like a bee, even though they don't have a stinger. Another type of mimicry involves eye spots. The moth in the top corner has these giant eye spots that can startle predators away. The predator thinks it's going after a moth and suddenly sees giant eyes looking at it and gets startled thinking that there is something bigger on the tree. Another strategy for defense is camouflage. If your predators can't see you, then they can't eat you. Many insects utilize this camouflage strategy. Praying mantis look like blades of grass. Stick bugs look like twigs, birds blend into the trees, and mice can hide in leaf litter. This camouflage, again, prevents organisms and predators from seeing them so that they can survive and avoid predation. We also see behavioral defenses that help avoid predation. This can be passive or active behaviors like hiding or escaping, alarm calls, and fighting back. Hiding or escaping is one effective way to get away from a predator. Some prey, like these little fish, 
will swarm around together to help distract the predator and then be able to escape. Others will hide, sometimes using their camouflage, to try to keep away from their predators. Fighting back can also be an effective way to avoid predation. This seabird is defending its nest from attack by vomiting against the intruder. While it seems gross, it can often be effective to keep predators from bothering them. Predators have evolved adaptations that enhance their ability to catch their prey. Often these adaptations have evolved in response to the anti-predator mechanisms that we looked at in our prey populations. Many predators can use mimicry to sneak up on their prey. The mimic octopus is well known for this. This guy can mimic up to 15 different types of animals. This not only helps it avoid predation itself, but allows it to sneak up unnoticed on prey items and capture them before the prey realizes it's in danger. Predators are also well known for using cryptic coloration. Tigers and spiders often blend into their environment, allowing them to sneak up on their prey. Many animals, like snakes and spiders, also have chemicals they use to subdue their prey. Many predators are also very agile or fast. So cheetahs are the fastest land mammal. They can run so fast that, so that they can catch the gazelle that they eat. Other predators are sneaky and can use lures to draw in their prey items. This angler fish has evolved to have such a trick. The little bulb on top of its head lights up and draws in fish who think this is another fish that they could possibly mate with. When the fish gets close, the angler fish opens its mouth and devours the prey. Coevolution is common in predator prey interactions. Remember, coevolution occurs when two species evolve in response to each other. In this case, we see that one species evolves a way or an adaptation to avoid predation. The predator that will then evolve traits to overcome these anti-predator strategies. These species will go back and forth and evolve together. Here's an interesting example of coevolution in animals. Garter snakes often eat salamanders. These salamanders are toxic. They produce chemicals that shut down sodium pumps um, the toxin is called tetrodotoxin, and it's also found in pufferfish. So, the snakes have evolved an adaptation to be resistant to this toxin. In response, these salamanders have become more toxic. After that, the snakes evolved to become even more resistant. These two have evolved together to such a point that only this specific population of garter snakes can eat these super poisonous uh, salamanders.